Well, we've been hoping, wishing, and waiting, and now finally the spirit of steam, a steam train, and a steam route in 1950s UK is here for Train Sim World 2. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and the big moment is here. We finally get to take our first look at the Spirit of Steam DLC for Train Sim World 2. Thanks again to Dovetail for sponsoring today's video, where we're going to take a look at not only the steam trains, but also the route between Liverpool and Crewe, which is beautiful in 1958. Uh, UK with all sorts of different vehicles and buildings of the era and of course before with uh, everybody wearing outfits and such from the late 50s and the trains looking beautiful as well. It's really an impressive DLC where they had to actually redo their physics engine to be able to handle steam mechanics and of course also have a little bit more to do in the train other than just kind of working the uh, levers for brakes and throttle. There's much more to do in terms of controlling the steam and whatnot and it's really cool. Uh, there's actually a driver's guide and a cheat sheet down below for those of you who are interested in the DLC. I've included a link to uh, not only Steam World. Uh, train sim world 2 but also the steam spirit of steam train and also the uh, route 2 which is all kind of part of the same bundle so more information down below in the description if you're interested here today but damn it's a very impressive dlc and i've got to say i've been playing the heck out of it we'll be live streaming this or already have done so and i've been playing a bit beforehand too and it's a gorgeous route with gorgeous trains and it's uh, quite a long route too, especially when you're dealing with steam trains that don't get too much over 60 miles per hour and that's what's great about them is that they really feel like they're about to go off the rail it, almost like a, riding a wooden roller coaster it's very very good stuff so th again this is the first steam route for train sim world 2 it's a big one one that everybody's been waiting for for a long time so uh, not only do we have a steam train as well for passengers but also cargo somewhat similar but diff different and uh, definitely operating differently too for the two different types of, uh, well, cargo and passengers, different things that'll travel down the line. Very, very good stuff. And of course, uh, full audio recordings that they've done in great detail for these trains too. And uh, yeah, they've, they've done a phenomenal job with this. So more information down below in the description. We're gonna take a look here today at the tutorials for some of these trains that show off their features, show off the route very well, and also show off how to refuel these trains. Yes, we actually have to uh, refuel the trains not only with water, but also coal. And that's something that you can do when you're also running your own timetable in this game. So it's quite amazing with this uh, Spirit of Steam DLC. Let's jump in. Now, to be honest, for Train Sim World 2, every time that there's a new DLC, I always say it's my favorite because every single time that a new one comes out, I'm excited to see a new route. Usually it's a new location and or it has to do with new trains that sometimes can be in different eras. For example, previous DLCs brought to you like 1970s US, but now we're in 1950s UK. We've got a lot of stuff here too, by the way. Six scenarios in total. Uh, some training missions too for how to uh, refuel the trains or operate them in general and deal with steam. And then of course some other scenarios that I mentioned that also help you to learn a little bit more about driving the trains in general and kind of operating if there was some sort of a fault or in this case, like for example, uh, carefully running during a massive snowstorm. So that's kind of a cool thing too. Lots of timetables to do and exploration on foot as well. well let's jump in. Welcome to Crewe, located in the northwest of England. Step back in time and discover the soot and sounds of the steam era. Climb aboard iconic living locomotives hungry for coal and water, and work hard on busy passenger and freight services through historic Merseyside and Cheshire. Wow, steam trains are finally here in Train Sim World 2. Oh, here comes one now. <laughs> There's an empty poster over there. Let's fix that while we're here. Oh, wow. Look at that. Now, we're in 1958, I believe. So all the trains and vehicles and outfits of the people here in this world are going to be from that era. And yeah, you can already see some of them wearing hats and suits and dresses and such. And the differences between first class and standard class. All the cars looking different. Absolutely beautiful. And, of course, we get uh, two steam trains too one for passengers one for cargo that have uh, different types of paint jobs and of course custom cars too for the passenger and uh, cargo trains as well station looking really nice too I guess we're supposed to oh apparently we're PS1 era 
Uh, wait, hold on. PS2. Come on, give me PS3. Give me PlayStation 3. Oh, you're not going to do it? Oh. Really? There we go. <laughs> Alright, let's hang a poster. In which these are all from the uh, 50s as well. Wow, and look at all that luggage. Looking nice. Strong tea. All problems solved by a cuppa. There are more tasks to find. Be sure to refill sand buckets, fill coal sacks, place travel posters, and light braziers. Oh yeah, some other side tasks to do while we're outside of trains. Alright, so we gotta make our way to platform three, and then climb onto the first class train here. Follow the markers to board the train before departure. Take a seat in first class. Wow. Yeah, looking real fancy. Wow, even detailing some of the uh, instructions for doors and windows. Very nice. You can pause the experience at any point and review previous and current objectives. Check it out now and then return to the game when ready. We have options for the HUD, controls, overview, and here's a look at the map. Looking real nice. And away we go. So for this first look here, we get to be a passenger, but then eventually take the controls and uh, fuel these trains, give them water. And, of course, whole cargo and passengers to and from the different destinations. And, wow, look at that. Smoke stacks everywhere. And you can even see some uh, cars from the 50s driving over the bridge behind us. An old bus or cargo van back there. Wow. This is amazing. This train is powered by an LMS Jubilee-class steam locomotive. These were built between 1934 and 1936 and originally nicknamed Red Staniers because of their original crimson livery, but later earned the nickname Jubilee when one of their class was named Silver Jubilee in recognition of the Silver Jubilee of King George V. During your journey as a driver on this route, you'll learn to drive this locomotive as well as the LMS Stanier Class 8F, a freight locomotive. You'll learn to haul a variety of different freight between the bustling yards and perform both express and local stopping passenger services. There goes some of that cargo. Learn all there is to know about operating these iconic locomotives in an era when steam was king. Welcome to Trainsim World Spirit of Steam, Liverpool to Crew. That is gorgeous. Welcome to Runcorn Station. In this training module, we'll be learning how to drive an LMS Stania Class 8F steam locomotive in BR Black livery. Alright, follow the markers to the platform. We're going to haul some cargo now with the cargo train variant of the train we were just on as a passenger. Damn, does this look amazing. Wow. Really cool to see everything looking as if it's from the 50s. Not that we're just driving steam trains in the modern era that are just kind of like being ridden for fun, like historical value, but actually being in 1958. Yeah, look at all the cars being of that era, all the buildings being made of brick, churches off in the distance, smoke stacks obviously spewing. And here comes some cargo again. Ah, uh, that must be our train. Love the look of these smaller cargo cars and also the cargo that they haul. We've <laughs> we've got a bunch of uh, barrels here and uh, some other smaller box cars. Looks like some also uh, maybe tippers or something back there. Some hoppers full of uh, aggregate or coal or something along those lines. A little caboose at the end too. Take a closer look when we take the command here of the train here shortly. Yeah, British Railways. 
say exactly what's in board, but wow, that's looking amazing. All right, we need to walk through here. Beautiful little town. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Everything brick, stone, wood. Looking great. Today, you'll be taking over a freight service bound for Ditton. This class of locomotive was built between 1935 and 1946 and was designed as a freight version of the highly successful Black 5 locomotive. Wow. Off onto the footplate to begin. So these are no longer in production as of 1958, which we are now. So these were made just until after the war. There's your uh, British Railway Railways livery. Very nice. Let's prepare the locomotive for departure. <laughs> Let's do it. The reverser determines the direction of travel and also how much power to apply. Move the reverser into the full forward position. This ensures you'll get the maximum power to get the train moving. As you pick up speed, you'll need to move it towards the center to save power. Wow. There's our firebox. There's the regulator. Combination brake. Sanders. Large and small ejectors. And, of course, our tea kettle. <laughs> wow. That's some really nice detail. Okay. Let's go. This locomotive has two types of brakes, steam and vacuum. Steam brakes will apply on just the locomotive. Vacuum brakes will apply on the rest of the train, so long as it is equipped with vacuum brakes. Use the combination brake to apply both types of brakes simultaneously. Vacuum brakes are released when there is a vacuum in the system. To create a vacuum for the vacuum brakes, we use the ejectors. The small ejector should be left open when the train is running. The large ejector can be used to more quickly increase the vacuum after coupling or heavy braking. Open the cylinder cocks to remove any water from cylinders after it has been left standing. Water in the cylinders can damage the locomotive if it doesn't compress like steam. The regulator acts like the throttle for the steam locomotive. It controls how much steam is delivered to the cylinders. Slowly open the regulator to apply power. Applying too much power too early can cause wheel slip. Oh yeah, we're getting a little bit now. Cylinder cocks are closed. Let's go ahead and pull back a little bit on that regulator. There we go. And we're rolling. Would you look at that? God, that city is absolutely gorgeous. Seeing everything made of uh, brick and stone and such. Really quite the sight to see. The first time that I've seen something like this in this uh, we're we simulator. We're moving. the regulator some more. All right, we can open it up all the way. We're starting to pick up speed. Move the reverser towards the mid-gear. This reduces the amount of steam let into the cylinder, but saves energy. Wow. Look at that bridge. Absolutely gorgeous. What more is there to say? That's amazing. All the workers' row houses down there, churches, factories. And the bridge itself, look at that. Absolutely breathtaking. This is what I want to see more of, of this game, is more types of trains and locations and eras. Possibly some things in the uh, 
not too distant future being tested out now but going back to steam and being in the era of it is absolutely phenomenal wow and of course britain having a lot of very old very traditional train lines made of stone and brick and arch uh, bridges such as this but having more modern trains running on them so to actually see the trains around the time in which they were uh, well even then maybe about a hundred years in the future trains running along all these lines in 1850 and whatnot 1900s 20s now being almost the 60s but still it just feels right there's something that just feels different about this you can see ships going through the canal back there barges and such loading areas which oh man just all the sidings and the junctions and different areas for factories this is amazing never seen anything like this from this game and this just feels great to be able to drive this train through these industrial areas with cargo I, i've never seen an industrial area built up so much in this game either where you can really see it off in the distance storage tanks we're approaching the next stop. Amazing. Let's prepare the train to stop. Close the regulator. All right, we're coming in to stop then. They want us to start applying brakes, but we've got about 0.8 miles to go. We're not going too fast. Although 45 and 1958 in a steam train may as well be light speed. We're going warp nine, boys. Look at that. Again, amazing just to see all those factories and such. Typically in this type of game, when you see um, factories, usually everything's fenced off and uh, there's trees and parking lots and all sorts of things that kind of prohibit you from being able to see such a long distance. Bring so this just looks great. In the position. All right, applying a little bit of brake. Got about uh, 500 yards to go. Traditional signals and such that we're also told how to, how to use them and how they operate in future tutorials. Wow, and a little creek there. Beautiful. Look at that, man. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's open up the regulator a little bit. Oop. Oh, look at that. Wow, even sparks coming off the uh, wheels. That's amazing. Not a good thing, <laughs> but just to see it function is actually pretty cool that they actually put in that little detail for wheel slippage like that. That's great. Engineer peeking his head out. That's amazing. I love all the little cars and such too. Okay, from inside the uh, cabin, let's go ahead and just roll forward a little bit more. And we'll close everything off. Oh, not backwards, but back to mid-gear. And we're pulling in a me what looks to be a passenger station with maybe, a, well, it probably would lead to a cargo factory as well. Yeah, just off in the back. So all the workers from the factories would come here. Wow. That's amazing. Come on, let's come to a stop. Great work. Let's see how you did. Amazing. Amazing. Welcome to Speak Sidings. In this training module, we will learn how to refill the tender with water before coupling up to a set of freight wagons. Firstly, we'll need to prepare the locomotive to receive water. Walk over to the water frame where you will need to move the water hose over the rear of the locomotive's tender. Alright, time for refueling then.
Wow. So we're going to refuel this with water and coal. And then load up to some... Uh, well, I guess we could load up with cargo and then start hauling it or start doing some small work moving uh, cargo cars around and setting up our own train. Just love how open it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's go ahead and go to the water tower and see how we do this. Turn the water pipe. Now the hose is in position, climb up the tender and open the water hatch. Insert the hose into the tender tank once the water hatch is open. The hose is in and the tender tank is ready to be filled. Turn on the water and start filling the tender tank. Oh, so now we got to wait a little while for it to fill with water. Very nice. Now in this game, there's also ways to refuel uh, some of the other diesel trains. And there's also a way, I believe, in some other DLCs to uh, fill with uh, different types of liquid cargo as well. Although I can't recall if it's uh, ethanol or... Oh, we'll close that. All right, we'll get the uh, pipe arm out of the way. And time to sit in the driver's seat. Now we need to fill the tender with coal. All right, set reverser to backwards, 75%. Set combination brake to release. Open regulator. But we don't need to go that fast. Three is more than enough. Uh, a little short. Wait, we're... Oh, we're currently at 29%. Okay. So... Let's go a little more. Nice. Much better. I do like how we were able to see where we were at. And we can actually visually see the tender filling with coal which is accurate for what can be done with other cars as well when you manually load coal in this game into other types of hopper cars they will show visually how much coal is in there and it looks like we're almost full Let's see it from the uh, driver's perspective the locomotive is ready to go but the points in front need switching these points are manually controlled so we'll have to leave the locomotive and walk to the points Oh yeah, no computers yet. Wow, look at that. Well, I guess there are computers in 1958, but certainly not used on the scale in which they can be used today for railroads. Or for manual control. Is this an outhouse? Wow. I think so. <laughs> Maybe. Certainly not a Greg's. Pull the junction lever to switch the direction of the points. The locomotive is now ready to move. Climb aboard the locomotive and drive it to the stop marker. All right, time for us to drive a little bit. Probably not too far ahead. 
But man, there's something different about steam. And we need more of this. This is great. We've got diesel, electric, now steam. Imagine opening the way now to all the American big boy trains. Literally. Alright, set reverser to 75% on the forward. Probably disengage brakes. And give her a little give her a little gas. <laughs> not too far, not too fast. Pretty comfortable speed to be going. All right, about 400 yards, and we're done. Wow! Look at the uh, maintenance center there. A little depot. Eh, we got a cargo train over here, a big one. A couple of flat cars, some hoppers, and box cars. Man. All right, we don't need to go much faster than that. Beautiful. Wow, look at this yard. There is just an incredible amount of little cars here and there. Look at that. And we're here. The point into the siding have been set for us. So you reverse into the sidings and stop in front of the wagons. Oh. Right, release combination break. A little sensitive on that uh, reverse. Just a tiny touch, and it's immediately flying to like five, six miles an hour within one second. Always afraid of a wheel slip in that case. So not only are we refueling, but we're going to connect ourselves to some cars and then get rolling. Although I think this scenario will probably end once we uh, have connected to some cars. There's some more cargo there. Nice. Now we can even interact with the uh, exhaust injector valves and the live injector water. Very nice. Man, look at that steam. That's nice. It actually is, um, it's not just kind of an animation that just plays whenever we're opening and closing the regulator, but it actually seems to uh, match whatever amount the regulator is set to. So just a small amount, 
ten percent, for example, just a little, little steam coming out. Very nice to see. <laughs> All right, let's stop. Very nice. Okay, let's bump into these boys. There we go. The couple to the wagons climbed down from the locomotive and walked to the rear of the tender. We got to do this manually. No bumping. The wagons are now coupled and the service is ready to start. Climb back aboard the locomotive and drive to the yard exit to finish this training module. All right, we're leaving. Now the firebox, the firebox is just animated for now. There's nothing that we can do in order to interact with that, but eventually there will be somebody else with us in the cabin that kind of uh, shows that they'll do the uh, managing of the firebox for us, but there's not really anything we have to do for that. It's just kind of a sit and wait type thing. Okay, we should be ready to move. Whoa. All right, combination brake is released. Reverser set to forwards. We need a little extra power then. Oh, there we go. Well, the brake was set to release, but didn't actually release. There we go. Obviously, we need a little bit more, a little bit more power for cargo, but not that much. There we go. That should be more than enough. Mouse and keyboard a little sensitive, so I'll have to lower that down for how quickly it increases the regulator. But obviously, in this case, we can just do it from inside the cabin with the brakes and the. Um, with the regulator as well, or the reverser. Well, the reverser is fine. It's really the regulator and the uh, brake that you may want to control a little bit more um, precisely from inside the cabin by doing it in first person rather than using mouse and keyboard. Otherwise, you get, uh, you know, just tapping the A button brings us up about 5% per small tap. And inside the yard, it's quite quick. But regardless, not about that about how awesome these trains look and of course how we can see the inside of the uh, firebox as well kind of glowing from first person which is gorgeous look at how long that train is and then as the firebox opens yeah you can see the glow that's amazing <laughs> alright close the regulator and we should be able to just kind of coast out of the station or out of the yard through a station and out onto the line. Well, that is all the time we have here today for our first look at steam trains for the first time in Train Sim World 2. This is a monumentous occasion. If you're interested in learning more about it, check the links in the description, and we'll be live streaming this game and these steam trains a little bit more on the channel, so make sure if you haven't already, follow and uh, check it out. Subscribe, look out for the live streams on this one soon. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks for dropping in. Take care, and we'll see you soon.